Let's dive into this latest newscast with all that we are getting in on the Ethiopian crisis, which has been going on for months. And now the United States has claimed that Eritrean soldiers have crossed into Ethiopia to help Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's government battle the rebellious Tigray forces. This was first reported by a U.S. government a source. Tweet, yeah. These statements were also backed by five other regional diplomats talking exclusively to Reuters. The sources claim that both nations have joined hands to fight the common enemy, which are Tigrayan leaders. Both Ethiopia and Eritrea have denied these claims. Let's go back a few years for more context. In 2018, Abe and Eritrea's president signed the peace pact, ending two decades of hostilities, after which they regard the Tigray People's Liberation Front as a mutual foe. Coming back to the present, local report suggests that thousands of Eritrean troops have joined the conflict during the last month of fighting. The Tigrayan forces have also admitted to rocketing the Eritrean capital, Asmara, now these sources have presented solid evidence to back their claims. Evidence of Eritrean involvement cited in the U.S. view of the month-long war includes satellite images, intercepted communications and anecdotal reports from Tigray region. A U.S. government source has also confirmed Washington's growing consensus, which went unreported, matches accounts by some residents refugees and even TPLF leaders. And so the big question is, has Eritrea entered Ethiopia to assist the Ethiopian troops? The US government source said, and I'm quoting here, there doesn't appear to be a doubt anymore. It's being discussed by US officials on calls that the Eritreans are in Tigray, but they are not saying it publicly. Now, the latest allegations come after a UN security team's attempt to visit a camp for those displaced in the fighting. Sources say that the team reportedly encountered uniformed Eritrean troops during an incident in which they were shot at and detained. Reports suggest that refugees crossing into Sudan have made similar claims, but the confirmation has been complicated by the lack of access for outsiders, including media and the communication shutdown to the region. Ethiopian officials, on the other hand, have accused the TPLF of manufacturing fake Eritrean uniforms to bolster their claims and increase pressure on the government to accept international mediation. The TPLF denies these allegations. For more details, let's quickly go across to our Rion correspondent, Coletta Banjo. He was joining us live from Addis Ababa with more details. Coletta, thank you for joining our broadcast. Now, Washington views Ethiopia as a major ally in the volatile Horn of Africa, but accuses Eritrea of severe rights abuses. So will the latest reports now prove to be a policy predicament for the United States? Well, at the moment, uh, we know that there are all these allegations of Eritrea being part of the war. The Ethiopian government saying no, they're not uh, really part of the war in terms of the military aspects. The, but we saw the Prime Minister thanking Eritrea for being a brother in this in this uh, struggle, um, for being good neighbours. Uh, but I think what's the, the major concern right now is now we are seeing a tussle between the United Nations and the Ethiopian government, where the UN has said that they were that their officials were shot at uh, when they went for an assessment in the Tigray region. The government admits and says that's because it was uh, part of a kind of negligence on the part of the United Nations staff that refused to stop at two checkpoints and. And also, we've seen the, the government trying again, reiterating that Ethiopia is a sovereign state, and we cannot. And, I mean, it cannot give the UN or any other party an, I mean, an uh, unfettered, uh, unfettered uh, access into any region. So the, this is the tussle now, and with the tussle now, we still have issues of humanitarian issues. More than 100,000 uh, Eritrean refugees in the Tigray region needing help, and also other civilians. And also on the other side, more than 40,000 uh, Ethiopians in Sudan needing help. So despite the fact that there's a push and pull uh, accusations of Eritrea being part of the of the war, the government refusing, but the humanitarian aspect is what is now standing out more. Right, Coletta. Having said that, we cannot deny that these reports are also being backed uh, in terms of claims being made by U.S. diplomats. Do also run us through Ethiopia Eritrea ties, which are believed to be mostly icy, till at least Prime Minister Abe took office in 2018.
Well, what, what we know for sure is that uh, Ethiopia and Eritrea, both governments are stronger now. And because of uh, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed having reached out to Eritrea and, and uh, given, I mean, the, the hand of peace when he came into power in 2018. So the, the, the relationship between uh, President Isai Afawaki and Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed is strong at the moment. And that works against the TPLF that is uh, located in the Tigray region because we know the Tigray region borders the, uh, the Eritrean side. So they're kind of in the middle so that we've got Addis Ababa on this side, uh, I mean, uh, trying to push them, and Eritrea on the other side. So in terms of peace between the two governments, at government level, they, they consider themselves friends. Now, the, the enemy, we can say the common enemy now we have is the TPLF, which works against them. Uh, the United States uh, has also talked about Eritrea having been involved in this. Eritrea has refused, Ethiopia has refused. So it's a matter of uh, somebody's words against the other. Right. Having said that, Ethiopian officials have accused the TPLF of manufacturing fake Eritrean uniforms to bolster their claims and increase pressure on the government to accept international mediation. This, of course, is a claim that the TPLF has denied. Is it even possible to verify such claims since communication is down? It's hard. It's tough to verify the claims because, you know, we don't have that, um, I mean, uh, direct access to both parties, both warring factions. So we've got, we've got the government speaking out about this much earlier in November when the conflict or when it launched an offensive against the TPLF and said that uh, uh, TPLF actually had... Uh, had, uh, I mean, uh, they, were, they were manufacturing uh, their own military uniform, which was supposed to work for them. But on the other side, TPLF has refused. And now we've seen Eritrea saying that uh, they, uh, they do not have any forces inside Ethiopia. So it's hard to, to verify the claims in a situation whereby um, information, uh, we, we don't have access, media does not have much access. Now we know the UN doesn't have much access. We are hearing just what the government is saying and maybe what the TPLF says. The verifying is really, really a problem because access to information is a challenge. Access to information remains a huge hurdle. Thank you so much, Coletta, for bringing us all those precious inputs. Considering the communication lines are down, you're bringing us all those details for quite a few...